So to continue uh, our topic on theories of accident causation. So there are many theories uh, that propose the causes of accidents or, or how accidents occur. And um, uh, these are the theories, um, the famous ones. So there is the domino theory. We have covered this theory on the previous class. And then there's the human factors theory. There's a Swiss model theory. There, uh, there are also other theories, which are the accident incident theory, the social technical system framework, the epidemiological theory and system theory. So in this class, we will be uh, covering these first three theories. So we have covered domino theory um, on Monday. So what domino theory said that um, the causation of, um, of accident is due to five factors. And, then, and before that, uh, let's recap again that um, based on Heinrich study, he he said that 98% of accidents are avoidable because they are caused by unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. So this goes back to human action. So almost all accidents are due to human uh, uh, human intervention. It's, it's, it has to do with the human itself. Okay. All right. And then uh, Heinrich also proposed the 10 axiom of industrial theory and industrial safety and then he uh, uh, he came up with the factors the five factors in the sequence of events that leads up to an accident which is uh, the ancestral and social environment the fault of a person the unsafe act or condition the accident and finally the injury so these are the five factors uh, in the sequence of events up, uh, in, of an accident. That is the domino theory. And he also uh, said that um, uh, there is uh, a central point. Okay, there's two central points. If you remove the central factor, uh, so the first point is injuries is caused by action of the preceding factors. Due to the preceding dominoes, it causes injuries. And if you remove the central factor, which is the unsafe act or hazardous condition, then it can prevent accident and injuries from happening. So let's say that you have the dominoes. If you remove the one in the middle, you remove this, the unsafe act and unsafe condition, then accident or injuries would not occur. So that is the dominoes theory. All right, so we can conclude that um, all of these accidents, almost all of the accidents, 98 of the accidents, is attributed to a chain of events that were ultimately the result of human error, no matter what it is, and whether if you say it's, uh, it's caused by crack in the world. So the crack in the world is caused by human because it, it, it could have been avoided if inspection was done or uh, the welding was done uh, properly, properly, or maybe uh, the person doing the welding needs more training on it. Yeah. So these are all uh, due to human error. So why, uh, why is it that we do all these errors? Well, because as human, we are not perfect. We tend to do mistakes, but uh, can those mistakes be avoided? And why do we do those mistakes? So there are many reasons or many factors that causes humans to do this mistake. So this is what they call the human factors theory. So the human factors theory uh, talks about these three uh, uh, points, which is uh, overload, inappropriate activities, and inappropriate response. So that's... Uh, look at one by one so the first one is overload so a person's capacity has its limits um we can say that if you are the a very a high performing staff but you still have your limit so 
An overload happens when there is an imbalance between the person's capacity at a given time and the load that that person is being given in a given state. For example, that person might not be well or uh, not in a good, good health to be doing that job. So the person can become overload. So when a person is overload, it causes fatigue in a person. It adds more stress. And once when you have stress, you're not able to carry out your duties uh, responsibly. So then you you start to do act unsafe, do unsafe act, or work in unsafe conditions and so on. So. So again, everybody has its own limitations, not at, excuse me. So we are not perfect. We have our limitations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, not everybody has the same strength or uh, not have not everybody has the same willpower and not to mention disability. Some people will have uh, some disability, so you cannot expect a person with uh, a disability, you cannot expect that person to be uh, climbing up uh, high places, for example. Okay, so there are limits to a person's uh, ability to do job. Okay, so when a person is overload, uh, so so you can have this fatigue and stress. Um, so. Uh, Examples of added burdens is uh, environment, environmental factors, for example. Um, okay, this is one environmental factors. You see, I'm trying to give you a lecture and this creature keeps coming and pressing my computer. So this adds burden. It makes it hard for me to, uh, to deliver my lecture. So this is an added burden. And then uh, other added burdens may be noise. If I'm in a place that's noisy, so I cannot deliver my lecture properly and you won't be able to hear properly. And then there's this distraction. Yes, this distraction. It's like when you're studying. It Well, it depends on the person's uh, capability. Some people like it. Uh, some people like studying with a little bit of noise, a little bit of soft noise, a little bit of music. Some people can uh, study with rock music, for example, while others will need to have total silence when they study. So it depends on that person. And that is also situational factors such as level of risk, unclear instruction. So let's say that uh, you are asked by your boss to complete a task, to do something, to operate a machinery, for example, because uh, the, uh, the person who's supposed to do it is not there. Uh, but then you're not given clear instruction on how to do it. So you can get, you can have this additional, additional stress of how am I supposed to do it if I don't even know how to do it? And your boss expects you to do it and get it done by the end of the day. So that uh, adds up to some stress. And then it could be also internal factors. Things are not work related. Some, for example, personal problems. Some people might have personal problems, uh, such as, uh, especially nowadays, uh, with the COVID situation, people have, the family might have uh, financial problems. Uh, so you have this additional thing, uh, additional things to think about while you work. Okay, so that's adds the, the additional load to your um, to your head. And then there's emotional stress due to all the problems. It can also be relationship problems, relationship with your partners, with your uh, girlfriends, with your boyfriends, and you start to worry about things. So these are uh, in internal factors that causes you to be stressed and overload. So when you're stressed or you, when you're overload, then you tend to act uh, in an unsafe manner. So you tend to respond inappropriately. 
So how a person responds in a given situation can cause or prevent an accident. Okay. So examples of inappropriate response include uh, a person detects a hazard condition but does nothing to correct it. And like for, so like when you walk around the, uh, your, the, the chemical plant and then you see something, you see a crack in a structure. But because you're just too occupied with your work, you have so many things to think about. You don't have time to look at that crack. You were like, oh, uh, it's okay. Somebody will look at it. I have other things to do. I have to get my, I have to get my work done. I don't have time to go and tell uh, somebody about that crack. Somebody will do it. So that is an inappropriate response. Okay. And then maybe uh, uh, you are in a, um, you have a deadline and you really have to get it done. So, yes. Any problems? Is everything okay? Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. Everything okay, right? All right, all right. So you, you have to get, for example, you have a deadline and you have to get things done. So you want to get it done quickly. So you start to um, use shortcuts. You don't follow procedure. As long as you get that thing done, for example, uh, there's a, like a safety safeguard from a machine and then just because you want to increase an output, so you remove it so you can get a higher uh, output from from that task. Okay? So that is an appropriate response. Okay? You 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 just you don't follow SOPs um, uh, because you want to get things done quickly because you have all this uh, burden in your head. So that's um, example inappropriate response. So all of these responses can lead to accidents. Okay, and then there are also inappropriate activities. Examples of inappropriate activities include a person undertaking a test that he or she doesn't even know how to do it. Okay? Should you do something without a, a requisite, a prerequisite training? So that's an inappropriate activity. And then a person misjudging the degree of risk involved in a given task and proceeding based on that judgment. So you do something, you think that, oh, I can do that. I don't need training for that. Uh, let me just do it. And you don't realize the risk uh, of doing that thing without a training. So those are appropriate activities. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so with all these factors, it can cause accidents. So that's why. And you have to. Oh my gosh! Can you? Excuse me. No. 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 Okay, I have to get rid of this burden first. So that's the inappropriate. Um, uh, what do you call disturbance? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so again, everybody has its limitation. So that's why bosses, right? They cannot assume that everybody is the same. <laughs> they have to take into account different uh, uh, individual differences. Like, uh, for example, right, uh, working in a manhole, you cannot expect somebody who is big size and tall to go into a manhole and do the cleaning in 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 that through that manhole. So that's that's why. Everybody is different. You have to look for somebody. Normally, the first people who go into manholes normally are small size or slim and skinny, uh, uh, not so tall, so that they can easily go into the manhole and uh, work inside that confined space. Okay. And also, maybe uh, you cannot expect somebody who's overweight and obese to go up a um, uh, to go up a column, to climb up, uh, and to do whatever things that you're supposed to do up there. Okay, so that's uh, also not right. So the management have to uh, take into account all these individual differences. Okay. 
So that is the human factors model. So the next model that explains uh, accident causation is the Swiss cheese model. So a Swiss cheese uh, looks like that. It's not like cheddar cheese or mozzarella cheese. Uh, Swiss cheese normally have those holes. Okay. Uh, so do you know why Swiss cheese has holes? Why do they have holes? Do you know why? No, 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 no. It's air, right? It's air bubbles in the cheese. Because to produce cheese, you need you need to have a culture of bacteria, and the bacteria breathe and release and release uh, gases, carbon dioxide, and so you have the holes in the cheese. It's like bread. It's just like yeast. Um. So those holes are uh. There are like imperfections. They they make um, the cheese imperfect, so they're not compact. Okay. So the Swiss cheese model of accident causation suggests that systemic failures or accidents occur from a series of events at different layers of organization. So um, uh, the Swiss cheese is used as an analogy of how a safety program or safety system in an organization uh, of loss in the safety program can cause accident. Okay, so a system or the uh, safety program in the organization is similar to slices of Swiss cheese. Okay, so like the one in this picture is a, it's a thick block of Swiss cheese. So when you want to eat Swiss cheese, you don't really put the whole block in your sandwich, right? So you would uh, slice it into thin slices. So it's uh, if you look at the thin slices, um, if you were to make a sandwich, right? If you were to make a sandwich, uh, the more slices you have in that sandwich, uh, the thicker the then the thicker your sandwich will be, and the thicker the sandwich, it's hard. It's even harder for you to bite through the cheese from the top bread to the bottom of the bread because you have so many layers. So the layers are like. Uh, uh, barriers of safety if we look at and the organization. For example, in an organization, you have many layers of safety. Uh, for example, first of all, the first safety layer will be the design, this, uh, this, the design of an equipment, for example. So the equipment was designed based on a uh, safety requirement. And then so that's one barrier of safety. And then the next layer of safety is you have SOPs. You have standard operating procedures for you to follow when you operate that machinery. So that's the second layer of safety. And then the third layer of safety would be um, the safety culture that's already in that organization. Everybody is already uh, having a, safe, uh, a good safety culture. So that makes that company even more safer. It's, it's, a, it's a safer place to work now. And not just that, everybody wears PPE. So that's another layer of, of safety. Everybody uh, is concerned of their own safety. Everybody wears PPE, so that's another layer of safety. And not just that, uh, the company also installs additional engineering controls such as it has um, CCTVs around. It has uh, sensors in its uh, equipment. It has thermal sensors, for example, for it to detect um, or sense a change in temperature. And they have pressure pressure uh, sensors so that uh, you don't have buildup of pressure in, in, in an equipment. And then, and, it, and then not just that, it, you all of these sensors are also linked to an alarm system. So the alarm would, uh, would be uh, turned on when something bad happens or if the, the sensors uh, sense something wrong. So that's another layer of safety. And then not just that, uh, the uh, the safety department also gives training to their staffs or refresher training. So that increases the safety of that organization. So you, see, you see, there's actually many different things that you can do in 
and a company or organization to increase the safety of uh, the workplace. So it's like the slice of cheese. The more slice of cheese you have, the thicker the sandwich uh, is. So it's harder for you to bite through it. Okay, but uh, like the Swiss cheese, there are holes. So those holes represent opportunities for failure. So just like all of the layers of safety that you have in the organization, um, they can be flaws. They can be um, holes in it. For example, if you have a perfect system and then um, and then suddenly you have a new person working there, you, you, just, recruit, you just recruit a new batch of uh, workers. So the workers might not have uh, the training yet and then accident can happen just at that time, just be before they were given any training. So that's, uh, that is the, uh, what you call the failure in the system or um, uh, yeah or it, it can be simple things it can be simple things like um, uh, not fixing the air conditioning and then making the workers stress because the working condition is just too hot and then the person has a headache and then causes inappropriate uh, inappropriate act or inappropriate response it's, it can be as simple as small as that okay so the swiss cheese model can be used to describe all these different contributing factors to an accident so that's why whenever there's an accident happen you can go back and see what is really the reason that caused the accident so you have the main reason that causes an accident but what caused that fact that that that, that first reason to be there in the first place and then you look at the and then you see oh there's another thing that caused that and then what why is that thing thing there and then you go back oh that thing is there because of something else also so that's why there's always a many layers uh, or reason that the accident has occurred okay? it's, it's always not because of one thing it's always it's because of a lot of things and normally it goes back to is the company's fault for um or not, uh, maybe for not giving enough training or they just not spending enough on their uh, safety programs. Okay, so the Swiss cheese, uh, like a layers of cheese and then uh, each layer of the system is an opportunity to stop an error. So the more layers you have, the less likely an accident to occur. Okay? So the more safety barriers you have, then uh, you have more protection from accident to happen. Okay. But uh, in reality, uh, everything is not perfect. There are imperfections, just like cheese. Okay. Cheese can have holes, so there are imperfections and flaws. So examples of uh, imperfection and flaws can be uh, no support from the management. The management just don't care about their workers. Uh, just like uh, the Bhopal accident, uh, uh, did we discuss on that? Yeah, the Bhopal accident. So they, so they, um, uh, the management don't care about the welfare of the workers, and then maybe because there is an incompetent supervisor, supervisor who also do not care about those uh, the people under that person, and then. You can also have demotivated workers, workers who are just not motivated to work there. Uh, they have low morale, maybe because they're not getting paid enough or they are overload and um, uh, they probably have their own personal problems. Okay, Some might have discipline issues. Some might not get enough training just because they just started to work there. And then there's also the design failures. It was not designed properly. It didn't follow this, uh, the, the design criteria, for example. So there are many different, um, there are many different uh, imperfections or flaws in, in, in an organization. Um, can you think of any other flaws that can occur in an organization? So I'm giving you a chance to, um, uh, to speak out. 
uh, and think about what are the flaws that can happen in an organization. Anyone? Or it can cause accident. You can go back and think about if you've worked before, uh, think about what are things that can be improved at your workplace. Miscommunication with your workers? Uh-huh. Miscommunication between workers. That's a good one. Who said that? Manje. Huh? Manje. Manje. Okay. That's a good one. No teamwork. Among workers. Huh? No teamwork. No teamwork. Yeah, that's also a good one. We don't have teamwork. No, uh, no good communication between um, the workers can cause accidents. So those are imperfections and flaws. Uh, workplace violence. Workplace violence. Ah, that is good. Workplace violence. Yeah, but. Sexual harassment? Ever thought of that? Sexual yeah. harassment, is that, is that, is that imperfect, imperfection, right? And... Lack of facilities? Ah, yeah. Lack of facilities. Power abuse. Huh? Power abuse? Mm hmm? Uh, and then in our building, we don't, we didn't have, uh, we still do not have air conditioning, believe it or not. So that's not good, right? Yeah. And then our elevator is always not working. That's bad also. So those things, even though you think that, oh, just, those are just minor things. Oh, no, air conditioning, you can still work. No elevators, so you can just use, still use the stairs. But still, those little things can um, can bring up to other things. Go oh, to your Allah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, All right. So those are uh, very good uh, examples from you guys. Okay, so the sushis. So they are the line of defense. So the more you have, the better it is. But then, uh, so even if, even if you have flaws, okay, sometimes even if you have all these little flaws, because you can't run away from flaws. Uh, okay, even if you have flaws, uh, those many different layers can stop the uh, can stop an accident from happening. It can stop the hazard from uh, causing an accident. Okay? That's why you have so many different uh barriers barriers or layers of safety but if somehow all of those barriers have their own imperfection and it just it just lines up okay it's like the swiss cheese if you put all the swiss cheese if you if there are holes that lines up together then it can cause accident if you have okay if you have a hazard you have your layers of safety uh, in your organization and then you have your supervision, you have your conditions and you have your unsafe act. Okay? If all the holes lines up, then that hazard, that one hazard that is there can go through the holes and causes accident. 